Hello, this is our student presentation on Problem C, People Ruin Everything. We are Team 1102. I'm Zoe Winston. I'm Sebastian Newman. And I'm Noah Hale. We're sponsored by Lieutenant Colonel Brooks Bentley at the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York, in the United States. In this problem, we are modeling the effects of introducing humans into an isolated system, looking specifically at animals and their predator-prey relations. So what we're modeling specifically is the anti-predator response in the prey. So, when humans are introduced into an isolated system, the prey become less wary and therefore their anti-predator response decreases. So we are studying how this affects the prey and predator populations over time. Um, and then additionally, the removal of this human interaction allows for a gradual return of these anti-predator responses. So we are looking to answer the question of whether animal populations will return to their original equilibrium point. In our model, we're assuming that the prey population is limited only by the presence of predators and by nothing else in the system. Um, it is in an isolated environment. Additionally, we are assuming that the only relevant impact of humans on the animal populations is the suppression of the anti-predatory behaviors in the prey. No effects on the predators, simply the reduction in anti-predator response on the prey, and then how that would affect the predators. Um, additionally, we assume that there's no seasonal fluctuations in populations, whether that be from mating seasons or otherwise. Um, and then finally, we assume that the animals regain their anti-predatory behaviors gradually after the exits of humans from the system. We borrowed the core of our model from the Locke Volterra equations, which you can see here. This is a system of two ordinary differential equations, which represent the population of a prey species represented here by X, and a predator species represented here by Y over time. So as you can see, each equation uh, takes two parameters for four total. Um, the two that will be of a lot of interest to us are beta and delta, but we'll get to, into that further. Uh, now this model, it should be noted, has two steady state conditions, which can be found uh, simply by setting each equation to zero and solving for critical values. Uh, this is zero, 00, which represents an extinction event where the populations of uh, either species is zero. And second is gamma over delta for the population of the prey species and alpha over beta for the population of the predator species, uh, which creates the unique time where we're going to see a steady value uh, for predator and prey rather than sort of a cyclical up and down, uh, which is um, rather representative of what we see in nature. In order to model the effect of humans on the animal populations, we chose to vary the parameters beta and delta over time. The parameter beta represents how much loss the prey population feels per interaction between predator and prey. So as anti-predator behaviors are reduced after the arrival of humans, we're gonna see this value increase as per each interaction, the predator is going to be more likely to get that kill. And then the other side of this is that the delta parameter, which represents how much the predator population is helped by an interaction with prey, is going to increase proportionally to that. So we represented this change of beta with a initial condition at first before the arrival of humans. At the, arri at the arrival of humans, we're going to add in a logistic growth function uh, because that change we believe is going to happen gradually over time as the prey interact with humans and lose those anti-predator responses. And then after the some set of time, humans are going to leave the environment and very gradually uh, there's going to be a negative logistic model to, to return to that initial condition as the prey relearn those anti-predator responses that they had known previously. Uh, and then the model for delta is extremely sim similar, just multiplied by some proportionality constant. So here we see our results. If you take a look at graph one, we've started from an equilibrium condition, a steady state condition, where the prey and the predator populations hold steady for the entire time, until we introduce humans into the population. There's an initial spike of predators, since for every predator-prey interaction, since the anti-predatory behavior has gone down, it's much easier for the predators to catch their prey. However, there comes a point at which the prey population falls so low that the predators can no longer sustain themselves, and so the pred predator population falls too. And they go on trading back and forth until eventually the humans leave the environment and a new equilibrium is established. However, as you can see, that new equilibrium is nowhere close to where it started. 
and both populations are worse off after humans leave the environment. If you look at graph two, you can see an expression of this same situation, but with predators as compared to prey. That center spot is the original steady state condition, and the spiral out of control was what happened when the humans entered the environment. That circle there near the origin, that is the new equilibrium condition that was established. And for the rest of time, they're expected to be looping around that same point. In graph number three, you can see a similar expression to graph number one, except different situation. What we've done is we've set the initial conditions in such a way that it is still in equilibrium, except it is a cyclical equilibrium. So the predator and prey populations follow one another, but will stay in that cyclical equilibrium until the end of time, until humans are introduced to the environment, in which case a very similar situation happens and the population spirals out of control until humans leave, and then a new equilibrium is established. Graph number four is predators versus prey, the same situation. That circle there in the center is the first equilibrium condition, and the circle near the origin is the second equilibrium condition. And the intervening lines are during human interaction. And then for graph number five, you can see our last situation that we chose to model, which was the extinction event. The population of predators was not resilient enough to deal with the initial downturn that they were able to survive from in the previous two situations. And so the population of predators completely died out. And because our model assumes that the prey can increase infinitely because of infinite food in the environment, the population of prey explodes to infinity. And then no matter what humans do when they're in the environment, after that initial extinction occurs, there's no coming back from it. And then graph number six is the same situation as graph number five, except it's graphed as predator versus prey. You can see, as soon as the line hits the x-axis, it explodes to infinity, never to be seen again. So, what conclusions can we draw from all these different situations that we've modeled? Firstly, we know that the introduction of humans into an environment has an immediate impact on both the predator and the prey populations. Initially, the anti-predatory responses of the prey are dampened, so the predators have free reign for a time. Eventually, the prey population is overhunted and gets so low that the predators can't sustain themselves at their new population. And so both species spiral down and establish a new equilibrium. If the humans don't leave in time, or if the effect was too stark, then it can lead to an extinction event. That's a very real possibility in a lot of these models. However, if the humans do leave in time, then the species can gradually recover. And we've seen that it takes longer for a species to recover the anti-predatory behaviors that it once had than it took for it to lose them. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it. Here's the work cited that we used on this presentation.